put the headphones down, grab your helmet. I was like, oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> you know, and it was like this, bam, like immediately like adrenaline rush. We're going to challenge the leadership. And by the time we're juniors and seniors, like that's going to be the standard. Ooh, that is getting and, goosebumps, bro. Yeah, Just and, thinking about that. You know, trying to win a national championship, mm -hmm. the Heisman Trophy, NFL draft, mm -hmm. like, you know, playing in the NFL that it was like, I didn't really have time to do, you know, other to, stuff. To, to think yeah. about the other stuff. And then I retired and I was like, it's community, it's neighborhood, it's family. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's what it is for me. And so we take those four students every year. We give them a four-year college scholarship. And the accolades and the awards and like football became who I was mm -hmm. and not what I did. 70,000 people either screaming for you or against you mm -hmm. and having the type of pressure to know that for the next three hours, I have to be damn near perfect. What I didn't learn was how to get kicked in the face. Mm -hmm. So I like to have everybody introduce themselves, get the thing started off hot. Let us know who you are, where you're from, and uh, you know what you're all about. All right, um, my name is Joey Harrington. Um, you know that, obviously. Uh, where am I from? From Northeast Portland. Um, what am I all about? Um, man, played football at the University of Oregon for well four or five years. Mm -hmm. Spent seven years in the NFL. Um, retired, and now I run my um, my foundation, the Harrington Family Foundation, and we give community leadership scholarships mm -hmm. to graduating high school seniors from around the state and help connect them with mentors. Um, our goal being to find the next generation of leaders in, in the state of Oregon. So mm -hmm. there you go. There's, there's 45 years of, uh, of me in about 45 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got up on some more of that. And it's dope because like you said, you, you've been doing the foundation for over 20 years now. Yeah. And you have a lot of experience with the NFL, different stuff like that. And you have a lot of different angles to bring to the kids as well now which i'm excited to hear about but we gotta hear about the journey along the way because <laughs> now we we had you on the channel before and you had some of your own like pe's some yep. organ pe's that you had done for the foundation different stuff like that so i'm sure we could talk about that with sneakers we'll, and everything. we'll get we'll get back there yeah so northeast portland Bring it back for me. Paint the picture. Grade school, middle school era. What was it like? What was your family lifestyle like? What did you guys know about finances? What did you guys, what was the dynamic in the home? You have siblings? Like, Yeah. I mean, you know what's so funny is like, I didn't think about much mm -hmm. as a kid growing up. Like we, you know, growing up in Northeast Portland, like it was truly like just like middle-class neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Like we, we, there was a group of us, um, you know, like my, my core group of best friends right now. Like Jeff was a block that way. Mike was right here. And then me and then Steve was two blocks over and Kevin over here. Right, right. So in that five block stretch, I, I, we counted one time, there were 94 kids yeah, uh, yeah. along that street. And so like yep. every, you know, every, every season you were playing some different sport. Every Saturday yep. you were up at All Saints or you were down at Lowerhurst Park or mm -hmm. you were, you know, over at Grant's. Like, it was just like that, that childhood where, you know, my, my dad was a, a teacher and coach and then became a high school principal. Um, you know, my mom worked, she was an architect. She worked out of the house though. Oh. Um, like, it was just like we were back and forth at, at, at everybody's house. It was a family. It was a community. It was a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, first time it would snow, like I'd call Mike and Mike would call Jeff and Jeff would call John and John <laughs> called Phil. And then we all meet at the circle and play snow football. Yeah. Like, and everybody, everybody just kind of took care of each other. Right, right. Right. You, you ended up at somebody's house for lunch and you call up and say, Hey mom, I'll be, you know, I'll, I'll be home at home for dinner. And like, right. we never really, and, and, and we never worried, mm -hmm. you know, you, you never, yeah, I guess maybe as a kid, I'm sure parents worried, you know, right, but right. like, it's been really interesting to see in look, by, by no means, nobody in the neighborhood was rich, right? No, nobody in the neighborhood was, was poor. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of existed in this, in this place where you just kind of all, all took care of each other. And it wasn't until you know, really going to college, um, that I had the opportunity to understand how lucky we were, mm -hmm. you know, like that is not the reality for, for the majority of people. Right. Um, you know, it, it's, 
and, and I still, I still tell people like, this is so funny. So that group of, you know, the five, Jeff and then Mike and me and Steve and Kevin, mm -hmm. Jeff married his, uh, Jeff married Michelle, Michelle mm -hmm. and Jeff went to kindergarten together and then went to junior <laughs> and senior prom together. Okay. Mike married his high school girl or his high school girlfriend whose best friend married Mike's brother. Okay. I married Emily whose best friend Aaron married Kevin who, I mean, it's just like this big, like incestuous, <laughs> like family yeah. that I tell people about that. And like, you've got to be kidding. Like, right. but it wasn't, it wasn't any, I didn't know any better. I didn't know any different. Like that's just how, and whether it was, you know, so I went to Central Catholic, you know, Grant High School was right down the street, mm -hmm. you know, whether it was Grant or Franklin or like, or, or Jeff, like you just, you just kind of had this, right. I don't know, like there's just know, tentacles. It's funny because like, like, as you're explaining all this, I am like reliving the same memories yeah. and feeling because I, you know, I, I was born in 91, but like I grew up in the 90s. And I remember, you know, playing kickball out on the corner, mm -hmm. racing down the street, playing 500 in the middle of the street. Oh, and how often were you down? At Grant, you how often it? were you down at the bowl? Like at, down right. at the Grant Bowl, just yeah. like play or just it snows. Yeah, like everybody right going needs down to the sled. hills exactly. on 33rd and mm -hmm. everything. Like there would be so many things versus yeah, definitely during high school, especially like oh, we got a snow day. Like we're out the yeah. streets. <laughs> like we're just having fun. And yeah, there wasn't as many worries. And it's crazy because I don't know if it's because we're as adults now and we're so much more aware of what's going on. But I truly do feel like there's just a lot going on in these streets. Like these kids aren't able to just go out and have fun. Mm -hmm. And they're more inclined to now like play video games to have a safer route or whatever it may be. Or the other thing, too, that like, you know, we can get into this a little bit is but like everybody is I don't say specializing, mm -hmm. right? If you're a soccer player, you're a soccer player. Right. If you're a basketball player, you're a basketball mm -hmm. player. Like, I played football in the fall, mm -hmm. basketball in the mm -hmm. winter, baseball in the spring, golf and tennis in the summer. Yep. I did track, yep. you know, on yep. the weekends, right, on the swim say, team. Yep. It, like, it, what? it's a sport? Cool. Let's sign up and let's right. try it. Like, All year. Literally, like, you're doing something different every single every mm -hmm. single season and now it's like you are like you are whether it's whether it's just the makeup of neighborhoods whether it's the way that kids communicate like you know hey i'm i'm communicating through phones or video games mm -hmm. or whether it's just like this specialization of hey i got a kid who's talented at soccer mm -hmm. he's going to just be a soccer player from you know age 10 right. and i'm going to keep him focused on this path like i don't know like kids aren't allowed to be kids that's so crazy hearing you say this because i've heard this a couple of times already on the pod and like i'm hearing people's like what happened to just sport just play like those type of things or like yeah i was playing this one sport and i thought it was my thing but i ended up going to be a pro in this other sport like and it's just crazy hearing these stories multiple times as the you know our generation you guys age and everything like hearing it over and over again and anyway, i don't got kids yet but and it makes me wonder, like, how do you, you know, with having kids, having stuff, like, how do you uh, navigate that and try to create that, you know, fun play mm -hmm. type of environment for your kids? You know what? Part of it is 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 just letting them, letting them. I don't want to say dictate, mm -hmm. but letting them tell us mm -hmm. and listening, mm -hmm. like. Um, I don't know. There's, there's part of being a parent where you kind of have to guide. Mm -hmm. You have to say, Hey, let's, let's check this out. Right. You know? And part of it too is like, you know, they may stay, you know, it's like, it's like vegetables at dinner. It's like, yeah, I don't really like that dad. Well, have you tried it? Well, right. no. Well, okay. Let's give it a try. Right, right, right. And if you don't like it the first time, you know, Hey, let's, you know, okay, fine. I can hear Start that. Make it a different let's, way. Let's try it again. Like, yeah, let's try it this yeah, way. Let's throw some cheese on exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> you don't like broccoli. Hey, now you like broccoli with cheese. Right, right. <laughs> um, the thing for me is, is I really tried to make sure that my boys got to play whatever it is they wanted to play. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because unlike me, they actually kind of wanted to specialize and, right. I, and, and not like, because, you know, I want to be, you know, at age 10, they said, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be Ronaldo, mm -hmm. but, um, but 
it, it just because like that's kind of that's that's where their interests were. Mm -hmm. I asked my <laughs> I asked my youngest the other day. I was like, okay, so soccer is your favorite sport, right? What's your second favorite sport? And he kind of looked. He's like. <laughs> nothing <laughs> it's like nothing like you don't really you don't like any other sports he's like no i i, I don't and it and it's and i gotta listen to that as a parent mm -hmm. you know for me it was i could i mean whatever whatever season it was like i was watching football i was watching basketball i was watching baseball like i'm you know i still remember being glued to the 2004 world series and mm -hmm. you know dave roberts stealing third base or right. stealing second base right. with you know two outs in the in the bottom of the ninth against the yankees i remember you know i remember jordan hit the shot against you know brian russell and you know yeah. swiping him by like because i was just glued into those things um i asked my youngest you know there was a there was a time, you know, it was about a, maybe about a year ago and they were doing their soccer tryouts and, and the coach said to us, he's like, Hey, we've got a spot open on this, on the next team up for mm -hmm. a goalkeeper. Both my, both my boys love playing goalkeeper. It's okay. stressful as a parent. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I, rem I remember now, or I realize now what my parents went through with me as a quarterback, like the, mm -hmm. <laughs> the heart attacks I gave them. Um, but I said, hey, we're, you know, we've got a spot open. Would Emmett like to, would he like to, you know, try and take that, get that spot? And it would require a little bit more, you know, a little more work, a little more, you know, stuff on the side. And, and I said, hey, let me talk to him about it. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, you know, um, you know, coach said this, this spot's open. They'd, they'd like to see if you want to take it. And, and, you know, here's what it would require a little more work on the, you know, on the days outside of practice. Mm -hmm. And, and at night he said, yeah, yeah, I, th I, th I think I could do that. I want, I want to do it. He comes down to breakfast the next morning. He said, Hey dad, remember that thing about, you know, the, the team was red too. Like that mm -hmm. was, the, remember that thing about being the red two goalkeeper? I was like, yeah, I don't think I want to do that. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's cool. I'm not going to force you. You mind telling me why? Like, so I can understand what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, if I go play on the red two team, that means that I don't get to play with Keon and I don't get to play with Matheson. I don't get to play with Jake and I don't get to play with Cannon and I don't get to play with all my friends. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather play with my friends than play on a higher team. Mm -hmm. and I was like, man, you, you that, and, and like, you got it figured out. Like mm -hmm. you're a 10 year old and you got it figured out. Right. Like, so, so part of it is like shaping them and, and giving them guidance back to your original point. But part of it is just listening to them mm -hmm. and saying, this is what I want. And this mm -hmm. is, this is how I want my sports journey to go. Right. Um, you know, my, my older son, he's, he's like, I want to play college soccer. And he said, I, and, and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get there. Great. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, let's let, now that we're, you know, into high school, let's, let's make that happen. And, and, um, you know, he was at, he went to do a, tra you know, training last night and all the, uh, all the lights on the, on the field were gone or mm -hmm. were out. And I was like, Jack, do you, you still want to do that? And he looked around and his coach was over there. He's like, Yeah. Yep. I can do it. I can do it in the dark. I was mm -hmm. like, okay. Like that's so two different kids, two different mentalities. Right. Like one, like I want to play sports and I want to be with my friends and the other, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Even if it's like, Hey, someone's going to take, you know, I'm going to play goalie in the dark and I may not know where this ball is going to, you know, come mm -hmm. from. And mm -hmm. the coach was laughing or laughing. He's like, Hey, I may send him home with a broken nose, but you know, <laughs> at least he's getting the work in. So, um, for my kids, like it's just listening to what what makes them happy? Forcing mm -hmm. them out of their comfort zone a little bit, saying, "Hey, let's try this. Um, let's get you exposed to as many things as possible, and then listening to what they have to say." So that makes me wonder too, like, because <clears throat> everybody knows, like me, I'm a competitor. Right. Like, I want to, like, it's just natural what I want to do. I've been yeah. like that since I was a kid. It's always like that. So for you, same thing. Like, top dog in college football, going to the NFL, knowing what it takes to be a pro. Mm -hmm consistently year over year in the limelight not only just playing in college ball but like everybody's eyes is on you everything you do like you said all those type of things how do you like take all that energy and all those different things and knowing what it takes and then still like let them know like hey you uh if you want to be great you know that's the thing right if you want to be great you got to do these things mm -hmm. right but how do you do it like in the, the smooth way 
Because I feel like a lot of people are so forceful, and then that's what causes people or their kids that may not like the sport or like friction mm-hmm. with the parents or yeah. whatever it may be. You, you know what it is? It's 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 an understanding that their path may be different. Mm-hmm. You know what? And and that's what I see too many parents doing is trying to force something that they want as a parent or this was my experience or or this is what I want for you mm-hmm. on their kids mm-hmm. right as soon as uh, yeah because I, I was I mean I was <laughs> I was the competitor of all competitors mm-hmm. like it was no matter what sport no matter what like I'm trying to I, I played in the the Fernwood Middle School Jazz Band, and I right. still remember losing to Ockley Green in the <laughs> in the uh, in the finals of like the of the jazz band competition. I was pissed; like right. I wanted to win at everything. Right. Um, but understanding that that might not be what they want, mm-hmm. and like starting from that point, mm-hmm. right? Okay, starting from the point that it's not about me; it's about them. Mm-hmm. What do you want? Well, I'm not sure what I want. Okay, great. Let's try out some things. Mm-hmm. I'm going to help you. Okay. What do you want? This is what I want. Okay, great. Well, this is what it's going to take. I've been there. I can help you, mm-hmm. you know, but you may not want to listen to dad. So, or we can find, you know, so we can right. find someone else who can help you. Like helping to facilitate what it is that they want and they need, um, I think is the, is, is the key, f- has, or I should say has been the key for me. And, and that starts from an understanding that, um, you know, what, what I experienced, even though it was absolutely incredible, Mm -hmm. may not be what they want Mm -hmm. and may not be what in the long run, what's best for them. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Okay. So we talk about the kids. Now we got to talk about you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So your uh, what was your like sneaker relationship we're going straight to sneakers huh yeah what was your relationship with sneakers you know in middle school or high school like you know you grew up around here Mm -hmm. some legends in the neighborhood like uh how did how did that kind of go for you like you remember your first pair of jays or whatever i was 30 30 30 really i just retired from the nfl really i remember i remember my junior year in high school our varsity basketball team, we all, well, I should say we all, they all got the 11s. Okay. The black and white 11s. Okay. Because it was, you know, we, we had to have black and white shoes. Right. Um, That's fire. <laughs> I was the only one on the team who didn't get them. Really? Mm-hmm. Why? What happened? My parents just said, we're not going to pay a hundred and some dollars for also, a pair of Also, okay, so shoes. that everybody had to go buy them and then you're mm-hmm. like, no. Yep. What parents- did you feel? You didn't feel no way? Um... Felt left out, yeah. sure, yeah. But um, part of me was like, I don't know, like, I don't know, I don't know. Like, I definitely remember looking around and seeing everybody with shoe, you know, with with uh, with the Elevens on, and being like, "Well, what was you rocking? You remember?" <laughs> It's like some random hoop. Some shoe. something was black and white. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, something was black and white and we had a swoosh on it. That's yeah. you know. Um, but that's the like that kind of stuck with me. And then I kind of got to the point where it's like I was too busy with like, I don't know. Like I was so focused on getting to the NFL or getting to college, mm-hmm. you know, playing college football, um, you know, trying to win a national championship, mm-hmm. the Heisman trophy, NFL draft, mm-hmm. like, you know, playing in the NFL that it was like, I didn't really have time to do, you other know, stuff. To, to, to think yeah. about the other stuff. And then I retired and I was like, Hey, mm-hmm. I remember like, the, I think they just came out with like a retro. I was like, okay. Oh, I remember those. Oh, that, oh yeah. I'm, I'm like, now I'm going to get those. Right, like right, that was, right. and then it, it was kind of like, okay, well, I remember those too. Oh yeah. They had those. And it was like, okay. Then it, it was almost kind of like a reliving yeah. what I, what I saw everybody else have. Yep. And then it got to the point where my kids, my oldest, especially was, um, was old enough that, you know, you know, it became cool for him. Yeah. 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 And I'd, you know, I'd have something on and, and, you know, like you develop the relationships Well, you know, I'd played at Oregon and, mm-hmm. you know, with Tinker and all the stuff and they would, they'd give, 
you know, the alums some shoes mm -hmm. and, you know, when they, I helped start, actually I was, I was one of the original 10 founding members of the pit crew. So when oh, like, the, fire. so when the pit crew, you yeah. know, first, you know, first yeah. got their, their Jordan threes, I got, threes, I got yeah. mine at home. Like, <laughs> like, so I, so I had those around and I, you know, I'd kind of wear them every once in a while and Jack, my oldest, and then his friends would be like, oh man. And it became a way that I could connect yeah. with, yeah. with my kids. Right. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. You want to ignore dad? Okay. Put these I'll on. put these on. And then all of a sudden it's like, dad, where'd you get those? I don't know. Yeah. What do you think about your biology homework? Right. Oh yeah, we can sit down and do it. Hey, tell me about what happened at school today. Oh man, I hung out with this guy. Right, and right, then right. I, you know, I asked this girl to the, uh, to the home. Like it became a way to like, yeah to open a door to conversation. It's so crazy what sneakers can do. That's uh -huh. why we try to tell people like, it's more than just shoes. Like a lot of people that, you know, care less about shoes. I'm like, bro, it builds relationships. It gets, you. it's just so many different stories behind a single mm -hmm. pair of shoes. Like it's so wild, but I love hearing that. That's why. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a way to like, I'm a, I'm a parent of a teenager now. Mm -hmm. And you know, if, and you got heat though. That's the thing. <laughs> Dad, could I get no, I don't know. Save your money. You know, I'd be coaching I, I coached this basketball team from third through eighth grade. And, you know, those last couple, those last year or two, you know, I'd if if I felt like, you know, the kids were being you know, going a little sideways one practice or I wanted to get their attention, I'd throw something on, and, you know, and wear it to practice. And I'd be like, coach, where'd you get those? I don't know, but here we go. Like, hey, they'll cut out, right? Use your screen, set it up, you know, right, back pick, right, here we come. Right. And like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right. it gets their attention right. and you can, you can connect you know, it's a way that I can connect with, yeah. with my kids. Yeah. I hear a lot of people's like, oh, it's so materialistic, all these different things. Like, at the end of the day, if that's something that brings people together or gets your attention or makes you work harder, let it be that thing. Like, that's yeah. how I feel about it, at least. It's fun. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's definitely not like, not like this. <laughs> okay, I got a problem. <laughs> you know, you got, well, but yours is a, yours is a, uh, is a business. It's right, a, you right, know, it's, right. your, it's a livelihood. You know, mine is just a closet at home. It's like, man, I, I need to, you know, I need to slow down. Like, I don't think I'm ever going to win. <laughs> um... But yeah, it's, it's, it's something that's been fun, especially with Oregon, you know, Oregon's relationship with Nike, mm -hmm. with, you know, uh, Tinker was one of the, one of our first mentors for, mm -hmm. for my foundation. Right. Um, it's, it's just something that's growing up here in Northeast Portland. Like, it's just something that's. It's a part of the culture, yeah, man. It is. It's a hundred percent. And I'm trying to tell people that it's like, it's literally, again, DNA show it's in my DNA. Like. <laughs> It's, it's it's I don't know how to explain it to people when they come here they're like oh I see now like everybody got kicks like it's just mm -hmm. a part of the thing like it could be some random person walking down the street with some crazy dope shoe on well but the other thing too is like it's everybody knows somebody who works at Nike oh for sure right for sure like it's part of I had I had somebody say and and for me personally like I don't I don't want to think before I say this. Mm -hmm. I don't own a pair of Adidas. Okay. Right. And, and you know, for me, it's not necessarily a, a sneaker, mm -hmm. like all encompassing sneaker culture. For me, it's a Nike mm -hmm. because that is, and, and I know Adidas has, you know, North American headquarters here in, right. in, in Portland and, you know, everything with Dame, but like, I'm about personal connection i'm about neighborhood i'm about community mm -hmm. i'm about like personal relationships and i i was with a friend one time when they had a pair of adidas on and their mom worked for nike mm -hmm. and they looked and mom looked at him and was like and didn't say anything but you could tell like there was there was something there. Right, right, right. And, and later on, you know, the mom said something to, to, you know, to her kid. And it's like that, that's hurtful mm -hmm. because Nike is a part of, of, of what I do mm -hmm. and who I am. And like, this is, this is something that's our livelihood. Mm -hmm. And to see you in something else is, is, you know, it, it does something. And, and that was kind of like, yeah, like, Man, you give me 30 seconds and I could name, you know, 10, 10 people, you know, just down the street that, right. that are part of Nike and have right. helped build it and have helped shape it. And, and so for me, it's, it's, that's part of Portland mm -hmm. and that's part of like, we talked about like my, <clears throat> you know, what was childhood like 
It's funny. I told I I was driving through over to my parents' house the other day, and um, I was like, "Hey, Jack, there's there's um, Peter Moore's house." Mm -hmm. And he's like, "Peter Moore." I was like, "Yeah, Tinker didn't design the first two pair of Jordans. Right, right. Peter Moore did. Right." And he's like, Peter Moore, I've never heard of him. I was like, yeah, Legend. he left and he went to, he went to start, you know, try, uh, start his own shoe company and, mm -hmm. it, and it, you know, it, it didn't take off, but right there. And I, you know, that, that was his house. And I went to school with, with his son, Hagen, mm -hmm. you know, he was a couple of years ahead of me. Like it's, it's community, it's neighborhood, it's family. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's what it is for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. Okay. So Take me to, like you was talking about in high school, you went to Central. I went mm -hmm. to Grant. Yep. When I went to Grant, Central was trash. <laughs> <laughs> then they got better. I don't know how they was back when you was there, but <clears throat> take me through those times. Trash and what? Okay. Football. Be, okay. And basketball. But we were state champs in basketball. When? Matt Santangelo, Mike were, Doliak. Oh, during your time. I was a freshman. Okay, your time. I was okay. a freshman. Yeah. And we had Santan. Remember Gonzaga? Oh, Rich, yeah. Richie That's Fromm, right. Casey Calvary, yeah, Matt yeah. Santangelo. Yeah. So Matt was our point guard. And then Mike Doliak, who went to Utah, played yeah. with Rick Majerus yeah. and Keith Van Horn oh, and damn. Andre Miller. Okay. He was, a, he was a lottery pick to Orlando. So he was a seven foot center for us. Okay. And Santangelo was our point guard. I was a freshman. I wasn't on the team. Right. But, um, yeah, no, don't, don't be calling us trash. We're state champs. <laughs> you know, I'm a general, baby. I got to represent. Okay, so uh, during this time, where did you kind of realize, like, football is your thing? And then, like, when you, like, how was the offer process with scholarships and everything? Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of young ballers out there listening um, that are trying to figure out how to navigate. It was different. Um, I'll say it was different now, or, or it's different now than it was then. Mm-hmm. Uh, when did I realize that football was my thing? Um, probably the summer between my junior and senior year. Okay. It, I was at, I was at a camp, I was at the Stanford football camp okay. down in Palo Alto. Did you go solo or with the team? Nope. Just solo. Okay. Um, and I had a con, it, it was like one of those, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. They played this game that it was kind of a rugby, football, soccer combination. Mm -hmm. And they just put the people into teams. Mm -hmm. And they said, and, and our team ended up winning the, the championship. Right, camp, okay. Right? And it was just this fun thing. And Coach Willingham, actually Coach Willingham, Ty Willingham, yeah. um, <laughs> pulled me into his office afterwards. And he said, you know, it's like you – we're going to off, you know, we're going to end up offering you a scholarship. Okay. Um, and yeah, you're a great football player, but like the leadership you showed in that game mm -hmm. is one of the reasons why, mm -hmm. like you can be a leader on this football field. And I was like, Oh, okay. You know, it just kind of, it just kind of clicked okay. in that moment. Um, because I played, I played everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I played like we talked about football, basketball, um, and it's funny, I, I learned I learned something different from each of my each of my coaches. Right. Um, from my dad as a young as a young kid, I learned the love of sport. Mm -hmm. From my high school football coach, um, I learned how to have fun. Mm -hmm. From my high school basketball coach, I learned how to compete. Mm -hmm. like okay. learned like you want the ball you throw yourself on the floor like right. you better throw your body at that thing because right. there's somebody else who will um and it took me a while to like put all those pieces together and, and it wasn't really until like the end of my junior year that it's like all right this is this is something that that i could do mm -hmm. um beyond high school so okay so you got an offer within like that same like month in of that camp or like was it immediate or it, it was it was i can't remember the exact so time. that was like your first offer well i got offered from oregon state but that doesn't okay. count <laughs> <laughs> okay so you got offered from oregon state you went to the camp you got an offer from stanford mm -hmm. and then when did oregon come into the play that's where you wanted to go originally or is it like oh man this is a long this is a long story um i'm here so it's funny like i ended up at oregon my dad played quarterback at Oregon. My, my dad actually started the first – he was the starting quarterback for the first game at Odson Stadium. What? Yeah. Okay. Um, 19 
68, I think. That's when they had them old school jerseys. Oh, like, 1968, they had the old school like everything, the, but like... Like the throwback, or was that before the throwbacks? Oh, because no, no. Remember this the, was like... I'm trying to remember. You know what I'm talking about? Like the high green with the yellow and it had the duck on the side. Man, you're, ta- you're, you're talking like, like, nine, from, like 80s, 90s. Like this 80s is 1968. Jersey, right? like, was it just like pinstripe, bumblebee style? <laughs> <laughs> it was like some green and some yellow, and that was it. Yeah, and it was all like this like wool or cotton or oh something. Oh, my like, gosh. But no, so my dad, um, my dad played quarterback there, and then was a high school football coach afterward and he stayed in touch with his coach mm-hmm. um um oh len casanova okay so kaz wrote my dad a letter when i was born today's partner is shopdnashow.com are you tired of wearing low quality gear i completely understand i made a personal mission to go out and find higher quality stuff and give it to you guys at an affordable price and not only because of that I have to wear this stuff every day and I don't want to be wearing cheap clothing all the time. So I want to make sure that you guys know about it and are understanding that we have a lot of cool stuff coming out as well. Hit the link down below or pinned or wherever it may be. It's going to be shopdnashow.com. There's new drops every single month. I'm excited to see you guys in the gear. And now let's go ahead and get back to the podcast. Kaz wrote my dad a letter when I was born. And it was a recruiting letter, you know, like a, offer me a scholarship. I'm sure there's going to be some, you know, uh, he's a little bit undersized right now at seven pounds, two ounces. But, I'm, <laughs> you know, we've got a great weight program. We can put some weight on him. Right. And, um, and it's funny, like, that, that obviously became a story as I started playing. And, you mm-hmm. know, like, Kaz offered him a scholarship when he was born. He was bound to be a duck. Um, that is hilarious. But I... I wanted to go to Stanford. Okay. Or I should say like was it for academics as well or is it I wanted to go to Stanford because I had a hard time convincing myself or I had a hard time turning down a degree from Stanford. Right. Right? You know, right. if someone comes to you and says, "Hey, Harvard wants you." You know, "Hey, you don't have to pay for it go to harvard it's like well hell yeah like right. i'm like right. hey stanford wants you you don't have to pay like right. here's a degree like here is literally like we can open any single door right it, and i was like god like how do i say no to that right and i was i told both you know coach Bellotti and coach willingham that like hey i'll have a decision made by it was December, it was December, like December 10th or something. Okay. And I was sitting there like with the Oregon hat and a Stanford hat, an Oregon hat, and a Stanford, <laughs> like in the mirror and trying to figure it out. Like, where do I, and I remember sitting there with, in the living room with my mom and dad. And, um, my dad said to me, he's like, look, you can't make a bad choice, mm-hmm. but if you plan and this is, you know, you're, you're never going to know this for sure. But in your heart, if you feel like you're going to live and work and raise a family, like somewhere else, California, New York, uh, Florida, Pennsylvania, go to Stanford. Mm-hmm. Because that degree will open doors. Right. That will be worth something. Um, you know, it'll get you an internship on Wall Street, what, mm-hmm. you know, whatever it is. But if you feel like you plan on living and working and raising a family here in Oregon, even if you have a mildly successful career, even if you, you know, barely step on the field, the relationships you build, the people you meet, Mm -hmm. the family you become a part of will do more for you than a piece of paper from a school in California. And that's what it was. In the end, that's what it was for me. It was like, you know, kind of like we talked about, like, this is, this is me. This is where I come, you know, this is Northeast Portland. This Mm -hmm. is Oregon. This is family and connection. And I said, you know, my grandpa is seven at the time was 78 years old. And, you know, he and my grandma could come and watch every single home game. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my, my parents could, could come like, it just felt right. right. Um, and he couldn't have been more spot on. And it's like, it's crazy because the way you're explaining this, it sounds like you're talking to somebody who's like 25, but you're like 17. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like that, that's the thing is, and, and that's the tough part about recruiting and, and making a decision when you're 17 years, you know, like, right. hmm, you know, right, right, let's right. see when I get married and, uh, yeah, you exactly. know, like, God, where am I going to want to raise? And, and again, it's like, you, you have no real way of knowing that. Right. 
Um, but I think it was one of those things like you just kind of felt it. Like mm-hmm. it was just kind of, it was just part of me. And it's funny hearing that too, because like my parents had me when they were young, like my dad was 20. And, um, so my thought was like, Oh, I need to have a kid by the time I'm 20. Yeah. Like my dad, they bought a house, yeah. everything. So like they were having already these, these things going at this age. So like I was on that same kind of like 16, 17 years old, already preparing myself. Like, mm-hmm. okay, I got to do this. Thinking I got to prepare. What am I going to do to provide for my family? Mm-hmm. Like, so I feel you on that same state of mindset of like, okay, because I want to play football too. Like all the different things. It's crazy how you're like running through all these things at your head at such a young age. And, but it is good for to have those conversations, to have yeah. those mindsets and those thoughts for sure. Oh, I, I mean, it is having those type of conversations with kids, you know, is, is huge. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we, it's, it's a funny, and maybe this is a, a transitional, like, we, our oldest, Jack, is, hold on, 14, <laughs> and we just opened up his first investment account. Right. You know, like, right. hey, it's not too early to start thinking about these yep. things. Like, how do you want to, how do you want to prepare? How do you want to treat people? How do you want, like, what is it that you want to mm-hmm. to do? Like, it's it's okay to say at an early age, this is what I want. Okay, great. If this is what you want, how do you prepare for it? Mm-hmm. I like that. Okay, so. You were destined to be a duck. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> senior year comes. Yep. Was you balling out senior year at Central? At Central? Yeah. We made the playoffs. Okay. See, so I made the playoffs. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> okay, so you made the playoffs. No, we were we were we made the playoffs sophomore. We didn't make the playoffs as a junior. You're right. We weren't very good. And <laughs> Central wasn't very good. Then senior year we won the we won the league, and yeah, we ended up like nine and one ten i remember uh when we did the last video i had like i think i had to look up a picture to pop up for the video or something yeah and it was like one photo of you online at central or something yeah. like that yeah i'm like, sure I, I can probably i can probably think of what it is yeah, yeah um, i don't remember it was, it was something like dark image i don't remember it was like yeah. some you know back in the day the cameras weren't as good yeah. but yeah i just remember thinking about that so okay so did you get an offer? Did you walk on? What happened? I no, got, I got, I got, so I got. It was technically still an offer. Oh like? yeah, no, I had, I had three scholarship offers. Like okay. I said, one from Oregon State, which, you know, I wasn't going to go there, and then right. Oregon and Stanford, and, okay. and I and I chose Oregon. Okay, so you go, you come in freshman year. You had already been down there before. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, what was it like freshman in college, trying to ball, trying to be big dog? No, just trying to just trying to survive. Okay, like just trying to learn, like just. Just like for me, it was don't step, <laughs> don't be the guy that screws it up, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, 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 yeah. And and it's so funny too because like that's how that's like the mindset. Like I'm just gonna come in, I'm gonna work. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna come in and work and just do do the work, earn respect, and you know, and 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 then all the other stuff will will kind of come. It's funny because it was after that after our, my freshman year there was a group of there was a group of about five or six of us mm-hmm. um myself rashad bowman wes mallard justin peel mm-hmm. um steve smith <sighs> looking at and, and not that we didn't respect the the seniors mm-hmm. but like you have to understand where where Oregon football was when we came in in 97. Like mm-hmm. they, they had, they'd been to the Rose Bowl and the Cotton Bowl 94, 95, which were like these incredible, like out of the blue, God, this never happens. Mm-hmm. Oregon had just been to their bowl game, first bowl game in like 60 years right. in 1989. Yeah, I remember like Oregon that. was literally, like when you were born, yeah. Oregon was nothing. Right. Like they were li- like right. a few years before you were born, they were talking about kicking Oregon and Oregon State out of the Pac-10. Like yeah. that's yeah. how bad they were. And so there was this, this, I don't want to say a belief in the seniors, you know, but like nobody would ever, I, I said to, I said to coach Bellotti, I was like, why doesn't anybody talk about winning a national championship here? Mm-hmm. Like it's not on any of our goal boards. Nobody mentions it. Nobody's, you know, and when I do mention it, like people just kind of laugh or like scoff. It was like, like something's, this isn't right. Mm-hmm. And so that group of us as freshmen, like sat down and was like, we're going to, we're going to challenge it. Like Mm -hmm. we're going to, we're going to challenge the leadership. And by the time we're juniors and seniors, like that's going to be the standard. Ooh, that is getting goosebumps, bro. Just thinking about that. And it was, it was a process. I mean, and God, man, I will, Rashad Bowman, like 
one of the smallest dudes on the team just but the biggest mouth. I mean, this guy would <laughs> this guy would challenge anybody. <laughs> and he's like this little freshman, just like screw you, get out of my way, kind mm-hmm. of guy. And and everybody had their own way of kind of doing it. But mm-hmm. by the time we were juniors and seniors, like that was the standard. The culture. And we yeah. we won the con we, we won the Pac 12 or the Pac 10 then. Um, you know, finished top 10 in the country as juniors and and then senior year, um, you know, we ended up finishing number two in the country. Didn't didn't get a chance to to actually play for the national championship, but mm-hmm. you know we were eleven and one, and um, a couple plays away from from playing for a national championship. Yeah. And since then, since then, that has become the standard for Oregon. Like mm-hmm. that is the that is that is what is expected. Like, yeah, I, I that's what that's why when I say like Oregon legend, all those different things, because I do remember those times of like y'all was the first group that I remember seeing y'all because i was going to them games as a kid yeah. seeing them play seeing all this stuff and i'm like bro y'all was really like changing the culture and then yeah like you said you had next guys that come and the dennis and marcus and all the other guys in between oh. like and they set that same standard and they kept doing the same thing and it was doing mm-hmm. you know and it was, it was even um who had ever had been a heisman candidate besides you from morgan we hadn't had one. Nobody. Nobody. And then we had what? Three after that? Two after that? Well, we got one more after. The, and then we got this year. One after uh-huh. that, right? So, so, so I was a that. I was a finalist in 01, and then Lamike was a finalist in. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh man, was he 2010? What well, he was a finalist? Yep. And then Marcus won it. Yep. Um, and Dennis then Bose, would have been if he went towards Dennis. Me. Dennis was, he was right 100% on. Hundred percent would have. Oh, won. he would. He would have absolutely won it. Um, and then, uh, and then Bo's on on track That's right, right now. So, That's right. Um, yeah, I mean, it is. Look, like sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to blend in. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have to put your head down and just and just do the work. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you got to stick out. Sometimes you got to. You got to make waves. You have to challenge, you know, you have to challenge the system. You have to say, this isn't good enough and, mm-hmm. and I want better. Um, and, you know, you asked, was I, was I coming in trying to, <laughs> as a freshman? No. Like mm-hmm. those, those, that, that first season, it was just like, God, like I just, just earn people's respect and right. don't screw it up. Right. By the end of that first year, you know, we looked around and it was like, this, this can be better. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, I'm not going to sit here for, for four years and, and just kind of swim in, in mediocrity. Right. Like I came here, I came here for a reason and let's, let's do it. Mm-hmm. So did you start, you started sophomore year? I started halfway through my sophomore halfway year. Halfway through. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I played, I played the second half of my sophomore year and then junior, senior year. So I played 30, 30 games at, at Oregon. What was that first start? Like, what that feeling? Like, you remember that? You know what? I remember, I remember the first time I came into a real game more than my first start. So the first game okay. I came in at halftime okay, or just after halftime, we were at Arizona and we were losing and it had been a couple games where we lost. Um, and I remember cause I was doing the signals. I was on the headphones. So coach Tedford would be up in the booth and right. he'd call the play to me and then I'd signal it in and to AJ and then, <clears throat> and then they go. Um, we came out after halftime and went one drive and Bilotti was, not happening Mm -hmm. and he looked at me he says take the headphones off i was like oh okay and so i took the headphones off and he walks to the other side of the field or uh, other side of the sideline and i see him screaming like and you know didn't know that didn't realize that he and tedford were going back in okay and he walks back over he says put the headphones down grab your helmet i was like oh okay here we go (laughs) you know and it was like this bam like immediately like adrenaline rush right yeah, and i yeah. came in first pass was a was a 18 yard comeback okay. over there threw one up the sideline to uh up to keenan up the sideline i think it was we ended up coming back and winning in overtime um fire 30 like 38 35 or something on a on a last yeah. on an overtime field goal <laughs> but then i didn't start the next game either okay um and again came in at halftime at home against Dotson against arizona state okay and that was the one that was like we went, we were down, I think we were down four, three, three or four with um, 52 seconds left. Okay. And we went 78 yards. And I still remember it. Like, left Tom, 757 throwback. So half roll to the left. Mm-hmm. I had a drag coming across. 
I had a deep in cut, and then on the back side, I had a post corner. Okay. Marshawn Tucker was on the back on the back side. We were going into the east end zone. I, I literally remember like it, like it was yesterday. Yes, I half rolled, bam, flipped the hips, touchdown with nine seconds left. Okay. The place went crazy. Yeah, right. Bro. Of course, but it's I so stood fire there. Up in there. But I stood there and was like. And just took a second and just looked around. Right. And like that snap, I don't know what, I don't know what prompted me to do that, but like something said, take this moment and like, just take a picture. Cause right. this is, this, wait like, a minute. Wait, 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 wait. This was against Arizona? St Arizona State. Arizona State. Okay. I'm like, cause I'm like, 90, I remember, 1999. I remember which game at I went Oxen. to when I seen y'all there. I remember, cause I was a little kid when I was there. I had my big old jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I was just out there. <laughs> yeah, that would have been 99, okay. uh, Arizona State, my sophomore year. And then I started I started from then on out. That's fire. Yeah. So, and over those, like, and that was the thing, too, is, like, we had, I mean, Oregon now is just, you know, blowing people out. Mm -hmm. But we had, <laughs> we had 10, 11 games just like that, where right. it was like, all right, better. like, last last second. Yeah. But we, you know, of those 30 games, we won 27 of them. Okay. Um, you know, I very clearly remember the three games we lost we lost at wisconsin to start my junior year we mm. lost at oregon state um oregon at the state, end of my always, junior year you always find a way that was chad them. johnson tj hushmanzada yeah, jonathan was, smith yeah, like they, they team, like, and yeah. then we lost to stanford my senior year like those are the only three games that that we lost um but so many of them were just all right last drive mm -hmm. here we go like right. but you do it once, you do it twice, and all of a sudden it's like for sure. Like you know your plays, you know your routes. Right? Well, but it's it's more than that. It's like you just know it's all right. Cool, we got the ball. Like minute minute and a half. Let's do it. All right. Yep. Cool. Like hey, coach, we're gonna score. So get defense ready. Like exactly. You know, like it's yep. just like yep. hey, you know, feel. Hey, what do we need? We need to get to the thirty-seven for a field goal. All right. Cool. Hey, kicker, be ready. Right. Here we come. Like yep. there's just this confidence that like <laughs> I don't want to say we knew. But we knew. Right. Like but that's when you in your zone, though. Uh -huh. That's like when you balling, bro, for real. Like it'd be like that. When you like everything is just clicking, you feeling right. Like it don't come like that for everybody in nope. the whole season or or a team, especially. Sometimes you got one person that's really clicking like that, and it's just the team ain't doing well. Like you yeah. see that happen often. But when everybody come together like that and they mm -hmm. all clicking, like that's that stuff is rare. But you got to, like you said, y'all built that from freshman year. It's not just like, oh, this one season. Like, oh. this is a. Oh, and that's the thing, too. Like, I mean, we're talking about Rashad. I remember we were at we were at Arizona State my junior year. And that's that's the game. We won like 56, 55 or okay. something in double overtime. Okay. And defensively, they were playing horrible. Like, I mean, this walk-on quarterback <laughs> for Arizona State. I'm not kidding. His name was uh, Jeff Cron. And he threw for like 400. Oh my! He threw for like 480 and five oh. touchdowns. Uh, it was it was crazy. And Rashad got hurt that game. And he's mm. from Phoenix. He's from that. And and I was I just walked up to him. I was like, and you know that we're down 20. You know we're down 14. We can't stop him. And I just walked up and I was like, I got you. Like, don't you worry. Like, right. I got you. Like, right. we we got this for you. Mm -hmm. And we came, you know, we came back and won 56, 55 in double overtime. <laughs> Same thing. Like, Oregon State game my senior year, it's it's raining sideways. I can't do a damn thing. Like, mm -hmm. I played horrible. Um, and Rashad just walks up to me. He's like, you know, he's like, I got you. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, Oregon State had the ball on the on the uh, on the last drive of the game. Jonathan throws a ball to the sideline. Rashad steps in front, boom, picks it off. He walks over. He's like, I told you, we got yes, you. Yes, sir. And it was like that, that yes, back sir. and forth. Yeah. Like, hey, like, and that's that, like you said, that's what was built over the course of like four years mm -hmm. is is that that team, that that trust, that um, yeah, that family. Right, for sure. Okay, so tell me about the feeling that you felt when you found out like. I'm in this Heisman race. I'm in this. Like, I have to do all these things externally now off the field, taking photos, doing all these different, comp, you know. See, that was, that, was bef that was before the season. Mm -hmm. So the thing that, like, I feel like that's even more pressure, too. It is. Of, sure it is. They put up a 10-story billboard of me in New York City yeah, across, from, yep. across from Madison Square Garden. Yep. Like, and people said, you were either on one side or the other. It was either the, the most incredible marketing, you know, idea in the history of the world, mm -hmm. or it was... 
the it was the the antichrist and is going to ruin college football forever mm-hmm. like there was no like mm-hmm. you were on one side or the other mm-hmm. and yeah it put a target on my back mm-hmm. like had we you know we played we played Wisconsin at home to start the season mm-hmm. and had i gone out and threw you know three picks and we lost you know we, we lost by two touchdowns at home boom game over mm-hmm. but you know went out through for I don't know, 280 and a couple of touchdowns mm-hmm. and we win by three and like all of a sudden we start just rolling. And mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. it look, it it's tough. You can't say there's no way to completely turn it off. There's mm-hmm. no way to completely like shut off all the noise for like right. for the reason you said, like people keep the more we won, the more people were talking about. Oh, for sure. It. Like the hey, the you know. You know, where do you fit in the Heisman race? And what do you, I was like, and you can say, I don't care. I don't care. It's a team. But the more people talk to you about it, the more real it becomes. Right. Um, you know, I don't know if, I don't know if it's part of the reason why I played so bad against Oregon State at the end of the, at, you know, at the end of my senior year. But, mm-hmm. I, but I knew like there was an opportunity we were on national television, mm-hmm. which was a big thing back then. Like oh, for sure. the entire country was watching. And for this sure. was my opportunity to say to the Heisman vo- voters, like, here's why you should vote. Here's, here's why I should win. Right. I think I threw for like 121 yards. That, you know, mm-hmm. I didn't throw a touchdown. Right. Like, right. And it, it was, you know, was it the reason I finished fourth? You know, probably not. Right. But, um, I feel like there's a lot of politics in it too, though. Oh, sh- I mean, this yeah. this was this is yeah. We can go down that that route, but, <laughs> you know. I finished fourth because you know there were other people that are better, mm-hmm. and, and that that's that's fine. Um, but my whole point was like there is a pressure that exists, even mm-hmm. if you don't. It's a team game. Like this is a team. You know, I'm only in this because. Um, you know, because of our success on the mm-hmm. field, which which is true. Mm-hmm. <sighs> But you still got to be able to like silo those things off. And that's you, what I was about to ask you. Not only just running for the Heisman, but anything in life. I'm assuming that was something that you learned in that time that you might have never had faced before that you was able to take things from and use that for later parts of life. So oh, sure. what do you think uh, those things were that you used those different methods that you may have to have peace of mind or think of it differently or whatever it may be? Uh, to keep you at peace as well throughout the process. You know, it's funny. Um, I, I think there's something that I did learn and something that I didn't learn. Okay. Um, I, l- I learned how to work. Okay. Right. I mean, I'm I'm, you know, a semi-athletic, six foot four, two hundred pound kid from Northeast Portland. Like mm-hmm. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't running a four five forty. Mm-hmm. I was barely running a five zero forty. Like, okay. Okay. I had a good arm, not a great arm. Like th- there were. I learned how to work. Okay. And there's no substitute for hard work. Right. One of the things I didn't learn, and and I think it it's it's funny because like all of those, all of that success, all of that um you know, like I said, when in 27, we only lost three times. Mm-hmm. Every time, it seemed like every time we had the ball in the fourth quarter, we won, mm-hmm. right? We take a team that, you know, is, what were we my freshman year? You know, six and five or seven and four or something like mm-hmm. that. And, and we're, we finished number two in the country. Mm-hmm. I never truly failed. Got you. Up to that point. Mm, okay. And I think that that's an important thing for people to learn especially athletes Mm -hmm. um is to learn that a failure on the field is not a failure in life Mm -hmm. right And, and and that's that's something that um you know i had this idea that like all right you work and work and work and you know it all works out for you, just right? Keep working. Yeah, 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 you just keep working. Hard work oh, paid man. off. Hard exactly. Work paid like off. hard yeah. work paid off. Oh, great. You know, we lost a game. Oh, it was a bump in the road. Like right. come back and work harder, and then right. you just get right back on track. Right. And and that's that's not how it works mm-hmm. most of the time. Right. Um, and so, like for me, what ended up happening is 
football, because of all the success, because of all the billboards, because of all the interviews and the, and the accolades and the awards and like football became who I was mm -hmm. and not what I did. Right. I'm and I wasn't, a lot too. and yeah. I wasn't able to separate the two. Yeah. And it's tough because in order to get to the NFL, mm -hmm. you are truly like, this is what I tell people, like <laughs> Ryan Leaf and I were talking about this a couple months ago. Ryan Leaf, who's viewed as like the biggest bust in, in NFL right, history, right? Right, 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 right. Um, at one point in, Ryan, in Ryan's career, he was a starting quarterback in the NFL. Mm -hmm. There are only 32 jobs. Exactly. In the entire world. Exactly. 32 starting quarterback jobs in the entire world. Right. Ryan was one of the 32 best people in the world mm -hmm. at what he did. Are, are you, are you the 30, one of the 32 best teachers in the world? Are you right. one of the 32 best surgeons in the world? Are you one of the 32 best construction? Like the, to get to that point, exactly. it is, it is like mind boggling how, how much you have to believe in yourself and how much like this like the, the amount of work you have to put in, the amount it has to consume you, right. like there is nothing else. Nothing else exists in this world except this one thing. Mm -hmm. This is all I'm going to do. This is, this is where I'm going. This is what I, I'm going to win a national championship. I'm going to win a national championship. Hey, you want to go to a party this week? No, I'm, no, I'm going to win a national, I'm going to win a national championship. You know, come on, come, come out with us. Okay, fine. Great. I, I got to go home because I, I'm tired. I got to get some sleep because I need my eight hours because I have a workout tomorrow because I need to win a national championship, right? right? What I didn't learn is, is what happens when you fail. Mm -hmm. And not just like finish number two in the country instead of number one. Right. Or not just, you know, mm -hmm. lose a game and then come back and go on a six-game winning streak. Mm -hmm. Like what I didn't learn was how to get kicked in the face. Mm -hmm. And then to get stepped on mm -hmm. and then to have the people who are supposed to be on your side, turn their back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the thing that, um, that I had to learn in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because that lesson allowed me to come to the realization that football wasn't who I was. Mm -hmm. It was what I did. Mm -hmm. Right. And once I was able to, to truly understand that I played better. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the irony of it nah, yeah, is sure. because that pressure to perform is gone. Like, I didn't have to be somebody for somebody else. Right. I didn't have to live up to this standard. I didn't have to, like, I could just be comfortable and happy with who I was. Mm -hmm. And also say, I'm a hell of a football player too. Right. Let's go do this. Right. So I kind of went down a tangent there, but like your question of like, what did you learn? I learned how to work, mm -hmm. but there was also something that I wish I, I, I would have learned, or I should say, like, I think if I learned it earlier, mm -hmm. I would have had a more successful NFL career. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it, I don't know, it's hard. I don't, we're making our way to the NFL career anyways, but I feel like it's also the system that you're in and the other oh, parts sure. that go along with it. You sure. know what I'm saying? Like, For sure. Like, there's other factors that uh, abso you can't Absolutely. Control, like, you, can, you can take... You can take 50, you know, 32 jobs. You can take 60, 64 guys. Mm -hmm. Every, hell, you can take more than that. You can take uh, another 32 who aren't on a team, right? Mm -hmm. Every single one of those people can go make every throw at any time mm -hmm. and make, like, like physically yes. do everything that is needed to, that you need to do to be an NFL quarterback. You know, there's, there are three, Three or four guys when I was playing, Peyton, 
Brady. Sorry to interrupt the podcast, but I had a quick question. Are you guys interested in taking your shoe game to another level, but you just don't know where to start? I built a full program just for somebody like you, the Six Figure Sneakerhead. It's an eight week program that takes you through all the steps that you need to know. We have a full community where you can engage with everybody else that's going through the same program as you. We have monthly live meetups where you can connect with me and other members on the inside, and we set goals for each other and hold each other accountable. Also, we give away a free pair of shoes every single month with different challenges. If this is something that's for you or you're looking to take your game to the next level or even flip your sneakers to turn that into real estate, this is the place where you need to be. I can help you with finding loans and remodeling properties and getting yourself on the right path to become a millionaire if that's something that you desire. If this sounds like something for you, hit the link down below in the description and get signed up today. This is more than just sneakers. I wanna see people grow and succeed in all aspects of life. Let's get back to the podcast. Peyton. Brady, Breeze, and probably a little bit Big of Ben. Mm. No, <laughs> I don't. I don't think he would have fallen in that group. Nah, I, he's I in don't. a good system. <laughs> I, I don't. Um, that could go anywhere and make that team better. Yeah, I'm just right? a Steelers fan, I, so I know. I know. <laughs> um, but everybody else, like, and, and you'd see it all the time when people, you know, quarterback leaves in free agency, mm-hmm. like. You know, I'm trying to think of something. Russell Wilson, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Russell, you know, obviously got traded, but like goes from the Seahawks to the Broncos Mm -hmm. and, you know, can't just immediately recreate what it's not the same. So, yeah, there there absolutely are other factors that go into it. But at the core, um, at at the core, it's, it's because everybody has the physical talent. Mm -hmm. There are only a handful of guys that that can deal with all of the the success and the failure mm-hmm. right and and that's what i i think i i wish i would have learned earlier so what would you say is your like quote unquote like dealing with it like what is your thing that you do to deal with it do you just tell yourself do you feel a different way now mentally? now or is it like now or then now well now i've been through a lot of like I mean, therapy, like, you know, I was seeing a sports, like I I started seeing a sports psychologist and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, trying to figure out ways, you know, I would say a lot of positive self-talk, like, Mm -hmm. you know, I feel like a lot of people need that too, especially even like athletes in all calibers, because in their little area, they might be glorified as this person. But then, like, they still battling with a lot of stuff with themselves mentally. Mm-hmm. And, like, because, like you said, if I'm not the number one and still, because even when you're number one, you're still like, I could be better. Mm-hmm. And you're going to just keep kind of beating on yourself. And over time, it's just going to take a toll. And then eventually, you're going to be like, bro, like, I'm not good at all, like, all this stuff. And then, like you said, it could change your performance. Well, see, see, here's the thing, like, for me, it was it got to the point where. Because football is, I mean, it's literally a game of, like, not just seconds, like milliseconds. Right. No, for sure. And I knew I was, you know, I knew I was an NFL football player. Like, that that didn't change. But I got mm-hmm. into the game, and I'd make a mistake. Mm-hmm. And then I'd have that, I'd have that dread and that feeling of, like, oh, man, just don't screw it up. Like, don't do it again. And then if I threw, you know, I threw an interception. Mm-hmm. The next time I come back to throw a ball across the middle, I'd hesitate. Mm-hmm. you just oh, don't do, you know don't want to screw up and right. hesitate for that millisecond right and now that what was an interception before now becomes a pick six right like and it's that moment of hesitation that mm-hmm. you, of just that and it's not it, like i said it's not a man i'm terrible i'm horrible it's just a moment of self-doubt mm-hmm. that is the difference between a touchdown and a pick six mm-hmm. so how do you uh get your confidence up i guess i would say in yourself now in current time in life obviously you don't have to deal with that but it might be other elements that where it's just like you know like yeah you mentally are there or Mm -hmm. working towards it more but what is it that you do what is it that you say to yourself you know um I think it's just reaffirming that even if you, even if I make a mistake, Mm -hmm. like at my core, I'm still a good person. Mm -hmm. Right. 
it's it's the idea of this isn't this isn't no matter what happens this isn't who i am this is what i did mm -hmm. right or didn't do mm -hmm. um and no matter what happens you know on the football field uh at the school board meeting like you know mm -hmm. whatever it is like this this is just what i do it's not who i am mm -hmm. i also think that um you know there are very few things i've i've found very few things post nfl life there is nothing i don't say very few there's literally nothing that compares to running out of the tunnel and having 70,000 people yeah. either screaming for you or against you mm -hmm. and having the type of pressure to know that for the next three hours, I have to be damn near perfect. Right. And if I'm not, I got to deal with it. And you're not, you're not a, a DBE or a lineman or something. I, you're the quarterback. I, though, I, and that literally everybody is watching the entire yeah. time. And that, that, that type of pressure, you know, maybe in, in certain professions um, that I, you know, I'm not a part of, that doesn't exist anywhere else, mm -hmm. right? So for me, like the post football or the post NFL has been trying to find, trying to find something that makes me feel valued. Okay. Trying to find something that makes me feel like I'm doing something worthwhile mm -hmm. or important. Um, that's making a difference right um because like this the the life of the nfl is just it's not it's not real life right it's it's not it's like this fairy tale exists on your tv you know for this tiny little snapshot of your you know your your existence on this planet like mm -hmm. it's just this little blip Mm -hmm. that people just glorify and fawn over but it's not real life mm -hmm. and when you're done you have to sit there and and you know honestly like sure people will say you know i remember watching you or but at the end of the day nobody cares right it doesn't you know oh great i remember watching you okay now i'm gonna go and i'm gonna work and i'm gonna put food on my table and i'm gonna you know deal with my right. family cool you know it's been fun mm -hmm. like nobody cares see and it's it's definitely interesting because like when i hear you say that i'm like okay me in particular i cared at least i thought i did because like i said i'm from here i grew up in this area and i went to those games i saw you as a young player and when i was a young athlete like my team was the titans mm -hmm. so eddie george steve mcnair all those yep. guys steve Kevin McNair, Dyson. yeah that was my favorite quarterback yep. but then when it came to the ducks it was like you and then, like, when Dennis came, like, him. But, and, like, I had looked up to y'all. I Because I played quarterback, too, right, until right, I got right, to college. Right. But, what, but, but if you would have met Steve. Right. You know, Steve was awesome. I mean, God rest his soul. Man, like, I he wish was, I could have met him. He was an amazing guy. But you would have had that experience mm -hmm. and then moved on with right. your life. Yeah. Right? But I feel You're, like. But, 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 see, but see, here's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like. That interaction that you had with Steve mm -hmm. would be this blip, right? Right. I and then you. you go off and you do your, your you live your life, mm -hmm. and Steve, you know, or who you know, I, whoever it is, then has to go about like that interaction with you isn't paying his bills. Mm -hmm. That interaction with you. you isn't isn't you know isn't like there has to be something that you find when you retire that. Like that fills your bucket. Mm -hmm. Like that that says I'm doing something worthwhile. I'm doing something that is um, that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. That uh, that that makes me feel good. That makes you know. And every for everybody else, for everybody it's different. Like mm -hmm. you know, for me it's you know I I, I want to feel like I'm contributing. I want to feel like I'm I'm giving back. And you know, we talked about the the community and then you know the neighborhood, the family. Like that community helped make me. Like now. You know, I got to this point. Now I want to be able Keep to feel it. like I'm helping yeah. to to give, you know, to to give back. Like that's what's important for me. Um, but there's got to be something afterward. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's interesting too because, like you said, you're. I'm, I got to win a national championship. I got to win a national championship. But then at the same time, 
you do need to be building something else mm -hmm. to fill that next bucket and yep. preparing for that. Like, and it's hard to then juggle and balance those things mm -hmm. because then you have like these immediate transitions in life and it's like all or nothing, all yeah. or nothing, all or nothing. <laughs> yeah. And, if, and, and in the NFL, if you're not all in, right. then you're out. Right. And like, if, if you're not completely invested, like hundred percent focused, like even like nothing else in your life matters, you're, they'll find somebody else who does it. Right. Yeah. Right. It's, yeah, because they'll be looking at your social media posts and everything. Like, what you doing? You supposed to be over here doing this, or like, yeah. why are you doing that on your free time? Well, or or <laughs> it's just you know you 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 make a mistake mm -hmm. because you weren't fully prepared, right? And if you make a mistake, then they say, fine, we'll find somebody else who does it. Nah, for sure. So okay, fill in your bucket. This is what I'm excited to talk about too: the community, but not that the scholarships and the community that you built in with those scholarships. You said you've been doing it for over 20 years now, so you got generations of students now well so so that's that's the fun uh funny part but that's it's an interesting story sorry i got this again like knee brace like knee surgery oh, yeah, we <laughs> i keep about shifting around you know <laughs> shifting along that's another thing you get when you leave the nfl is you get surgery <laughs> um so i started i started my foundation in 2002 when i was drafted okay you know i started out with my signing bonus from detroit and and because again like one of those things like i knew that at some point whenever it was i was done i wanted to give back. I wanted, mm -hmm. I wanted to do something in the nonprofit world. Mm -hmm. I had no, literally no idea what that was. Mm -hmm. So for the, you know, based on the 501c3 rules, you have to, you have to set up a mission statement and you have to right. give a certain amount away or a certain amount of money away every year to, you know, to qualify. And so we had this broad mission statement that, you know, we we're set up for the health care, care, well-being, education, you know, of kids around the world. And I mean, it was right, like, you right, know, right. everybody it's kumbaya, like hold your hand, right, you know. Right, right. And we literally gave, I'm not kidding when I say this, we helped build a, a science lab at a, a local Catholic school here. Okay, and no. we gave so soccer balls to kids in Uganda. So like literally, like we all were over the place. all over the place. Like yeah. we And we just kind of gave small small grants so you know was your wife running this stuff or no like, this was this was i was literally else? draft this was i was 20 i was 23 so it okay. was me and my mom and my dad okay and we would each take a chunk of what we needed to give away and we'd say all right this is a project and okay so mom and dad was helping on the back end with that type of stuff exactly okay and so i retired and i was like all right let's do like you know let's do the foundation thing all right let's go and hard. so yeah. yeah so i i walked in and to the to the office of um, one of the guys. He was a president of a bank at the time, a local bank. And he um, had helped in some of our fundraisers. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, you know, let's, here's what I want to do. I'm retired. Let's make this happen. Mm -hmm. And he looks at me, he says, Joey, I love your passion. I love your enthusiasm. But if you're telling me that the money I give to you, you're just going to turn around and give us a grant back to Boys and Girls Club. Why wouldn't I just give the money to Boys and Girls Club? Right, right, right. Like, I don't know. You got a good point. I'll call you in six months. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and so like, and so I had to go back to the drawing board mm -hmm. and like, okay, what is it that if I'm going to, if I'm going to run a nonprofit, if I'm going to make this foundation, my post football life, mm -hmm. it's got to be something unique. And I said, okay, wait. if you think of me, if, if, you know, if people think of me, what is it going to be? It's going to be an Oregonian, uh, left, came back. Um, a quarterback, a position of leadership, um, you know, rooted in family and mm -hmm. community. And so I came up with this idea of, um, and I call it a, we still have this back and forth, our, my exec, our executive director and I, um, I like to call it a community quarterback scholarship. Okay. But people are the first couple of years, people thought you had to be an athlete. To right. Apply. Right. So right. I, was, I get that. So it's just community just leadership. Also wording. Yeah. yeah. But so, um, what we do is we give four, four year scholarships mm -hmm. away every year to graduating high school seniors from around the state of Oregon, mm -hmm. purely based on financial need and community leadership. Okay. What are you doing? Because there's nothing wrong with being a four point student and being on the honor roll and being in the national honor society. But again, it's that, it's that idea. Like it's that Stanford idea. Mm -hmm. The kid who gets a 4.2 and, you know, is on national honor society and, you know, mom or dad, you know, or a lawyer in town, mm -hmm. like 
they're going to end up back East and they're going to have somebody who, right. you know, they end up at Penn or Cornell and they get an internship on wall street right, and they're right. at, you know, KPMG, you know, they're, uh, you get their accounting internship and they're pushing a pencil for a quarter million a year. Mm-hmm. Like they're going to be fine. But my, my goal is I wanted to find leaders. Mm-hmm. I wanted to find the people that were willing to do the work. Mm-hmm. And so we give our scholarship based on like, do you have an idea? Mm-hmm. Have you, have you seen something that's missing from, from your community from, and, and what have you done about it? Mm-hmm. Like for so often we have these, we have the discussions, you know, every year when we read through the applications, it's like, this person was part of this club. This person was part of this club. This mm-hmm. person was part of the social justice club. This person started the club. Right. Like, this is what I see that is, that need, that our community needs. And this is what I'm doing. Yeah. About. I like that. And so, and so we take those four students every year. We give them a four-year college scholarship. Each year, you know, those students, they learn, they grow, and they come back and say, hey, I'd like to, I'd like to you know, learn more about this, or I'd like to be connected here. So we have a board of mentors. Mm-hmm. And those mentors are, you know, everyone from, you know, state Supreme Court justices to, you know, like I said, Tinker was one of our first mentors. He's mm-hmm. not, you know, on the, he's a little busy, yeah. you know, traveling the world, <laughs> but, you know, uh, finance, design, you know, Wyden and mm-hmm. Kennedy, banking, you know, it, literally all of the, of the president of, of a winery, like, mm-hmm. Things that are intrinsically Oregon gotcha. that we can help say to our students, all right, great. Hey, this is what you want. Let me introduce you to DJ. Mm-hmm. And you want to learn more about, um, you want to learn more about how to run a great podcast. Like, mm-hmm. you know, great here. You know, right, let me, right. like, and just let's, let's have coffee. Mm-hmm. And so th- these mentors just become a resource. They help open doors. They, mm-hmm. they help them build relationships. They say, Hey, I can't, uh, I can't help, you know, I don't have exactly what you're looking for, but let me introduce you to this person, mm-hmm. you know, Hey, so-and-so, you know, this student who I'm, I'm working with, Hey, they applied for your internship. Hey, maybe take a look at their application. Mm-hmm. Right. And those are the things that you need. You know, it's that old, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Not for sure. And for so many of our students, they don't have the who you know Mm -hmm. for reasons of finances or because maybe they live in like rural, like Southern Oregon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're just, they just not around, (laughs) you know, they just don't have that network of people. So the great thing about like this program is... It's a long-term play. You know, mm-hmm. you said we've got 20 years of students. We actually, we're in, this will be year 11 of, 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 a, of the program. So we started in 2000, 2011, 2012. Okay. Um, and, you know, now we are having those students who have graduated, mm-hmm. like you said, that are, that are becoming established, that are establishing themselves in the nursing profession, mm-hmm. in the marketing world, like who say, hey, you know, if you have somebody who needs some help, send them my way. Mm -hmm. And that's the great thing is like what started out is like, there was literally four students. First group. Dave Fronmeyer, who was the president at the University of Oregon, a former attorney general, you know, in our state and Tinker. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the student's parents, you know, were sitting in a restaurant. It's like, all right, you know, here we go. Like one, two, three, change the world. Right, right, right. You know, and, and, you know, they all sit there twiddling their thumbs and it's like, you know, so what are you majoring in? Like it's, it's turned into, you know, almost a hundred people getting together for family dinners Mm -hmm. in the springtime. And to be able to see, you know, um, you know, a great, my favorite example is she was actually just appointed to a federal judge, um, justice Adrian Nelson. She was the first, the first black woman to be appointed to the state Supreme court. Um, and has now moved on, but appointed by federal, uh, by president Biden to be a federal judge. Okay. I will never forget like her sitting at table, you know, and I say, holding court, like, mm-hmm. all right, you, okay, great. Um, call me on Tuesday and we'll have lunch and I know who I can. Okay. But right. Hey, don't you go, you know, you don't, you go running away. Like, okay, you need to call me on Thursday and I'm going to introduce you right. to. So like, That's like, it's just like turned into this family of just people sitting at the table and just connecting. Mm-hmm. and. You know, that's why I tell the mentors, you know, when, when I ask them to be part of this program is it's, I'm not looking for you to be 
calling our students every every week and saying, right. are, are you doing your homework? Right, right, right. I'm just looking for you to be a resource. Mm -hmm. Be somebody who can lend some advice. Be someone who can make a phone call. Mm -hmm. Be someone who they could, you know, hey, twice a year, just go get a cup of coffee and check mm -hmm. in. Just let them know that there's somebody that's there for them. Um, and that's been a really cool process to watch develop, you know, to start as, you know, 10 people in a, in a, in a restaurant turn into, you know, a hundred people getting together and, mm -hmm. um, you know, making sure, you know, like I said, like my goal is to find the next generation of leaders. Mm -hmm. Um, and that can be, you know, that could be in Nike, it could be in nursing, it could be in farming, it mm -hmm. could be in government, it could be, you know, but just making sure that our state is taken care of by people who truly care and are invested mm -hmm. in our state. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It, it just gets me excited too, thinking about like your kids could potentially like take this on and be a part of it. They're not going to make a whole lot of money out of it, but you know, yeah. But like, you know, but just having it, you know, um, a part of their, you know, lifestyle yeah. as well. Well, they get to they get to see it and, and pass that legacy, you know, when your time is up, and it could, this is something that could live past your lifetime. You know what I'm saying? Like this is something that you're building that's more than like you said, just those couple comments about sports or whatever. Like this is something that's going to make an impact and continue to last for a while. Well, well, it is. I mean, it, it's we are our scholarships are endowed in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, for forever, mm -hmm. we will be able to give. Every year, we'll be able to give four twenty thousand dollars scholarships mm -hmm. to to students in the state. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're gonna, you know, hopefully, I'm doing this. How old am I? Forty five. Hopefully, I'm doing this for the next sixty five years. Right, but, right, right. You know, at some point, yeah, I, I will. Um, sixty five, fifty five. I'm gonna be later, just, I'm gonna do some quick math. I'm forty five. Yeah, <laughs> fifty five. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'm hopefully at, at some point I'm passing this on and yeah. and to people who truly care about. Not just Northeast Portland, right. but like who care about our state and, and who want to make sure that it's run by people who are invested. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Okay. We're wrapping up. Okay. I know you got to go soon. Uh, got to take care of the knee. I just got to ask a couple of questions because I know you was talking about it. Uh, just tell them real quick what happened to the knee. So give them a quick <laughs> you want rundown. the uh, you want the uh, give them the, quick the medical version or the um, or the the layman's version. Like the that's layman's version. the layman's version. Okay, cool. They uh, I had three cartilage transplants. He's wearing a knee under. He's wearing a. He's wearing. A I only knee. got two. He's wearing yeah. a brace underneath his. Uh, yeah, I got two pair of pants that I can. They're like stretchy. They can fit <laughs> over the top. Um, uh, three cartilage transplants and then what's called a tibial osteotomy where they cut through my shin and screw in a a titanium wedge okay. to change the angle that my shin comes into my knee. Oh, okay, okay. Like uh, where the bone or... Yeah, so instead like of like coming like in that, like this, yeah, they put so the flat. wedge in so now it kind of comes in like that so and takes much, the, takes the pressure yeah. off that. Okay. Yeah. Essentially like where the meniscus is at? Oh, hell, I don't know. Right? That's what I was like. Do you like want the, the pads that... DJ, man, you, you're asking too many questions. Okay, I don't know. That's what I was wondering. I don't know. Because I had ACL meniscus <laughs> surgery. Uh -huh. So I remember like a little bit, but I'm like, yeah, it's been a while. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I just know I got to stay on crutches for eight weeks. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. He pulled up in the crutches. He was dedicated. I appreciate it, bro. Yeah. Okay. Final questions. These are the questions everybody always asks me. It's about right. sneakers. Go. Hot round. Uh, what is the most? Um, I can't really ask you that one. But Why? Why well, do you know? What's the most you spent on a pair of shoes? Or your most expensive pair of shoes? Most I've spent on a pair of shoes, probably a couple hundred bucks. A couple hundred bucks, yeah. You know, but then you like, have shoes that are worth thousands of dollars. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah. So I've got the I got the pit crews, you know, because yeah. you got the I, I helped PEs. start the right. yeah. Um, but the one that the one that I, I look, I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do with it. Right. But Tinker was just like, literally, he's on like this paddleboard, skateboard, like rowing through the neighborhood yeah. during, uh, you know, Christmas time. And he walks up to the house. He's like, here, just Merry Christmas from the, I was like, what the hell is this? Right, and I right, open right. it up and they're the low, the, the 11s, 11 lows, the 11 lows, but they have on each of the tongue, it's this drawing that he did mm -hmm. one of himself and one of, of 
of, of Mike, of Jordan. Fire. And they're each signed. One, you know, one tongue is signed by Tinker and one tongue is signed by, by Jordan. That's crazy. And Tinker wrote like this little, uh, um, it's almost like a little holiday poem and then did like this little card with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, so I don't know how His much that's worth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But like, so I, you know, what, what am I supposed to yeah, do? I'm not going to be wearing that. That's expensive shoe for sure. Yeah, yeah, but I don't even know what that would even be, right. be worth. But, okay. Um, how many yeah. pairs of shoes do you have in your collection? Uh, and you say collection, like or, things. Yeah. So, so I'm just, I'm just, you know, shoes that I wear or shoes that I like collect and put. You know, I don't have like this, but I, I don't got know. A Some people just kind of count them all. You know, like, I'll say maybe fifty. Okay, that's solid. Yeah. That's solid. Okay. Um, what is the greatest sneaker of all time? Oh. It's either gotta be. For style, it's either got to be the three or Ooh, the eleven. The threes or the elevens. That's a good one. I like both of those. But for performance, okay. Ooh, man, because <laughs> like you put on a th like you put on a pair of threes. It's like I don't know that I could really I'd go out and play in these right nah, now. Yeah, like they just don't. They don't move like right. like today's. Um, the greatest sneaker. Oh man. Man, they got some good running. Are we talking like running shoes now? Are we talking like if you're going to go out and hoop? It's up to you, bro. It don't matter. <laughs> I'm thinking about this way too much. Okay, I'm going to say the three or the 11. All right, okay, the go. threes or 11. Yeah. All right, now, final question. If you could have one shoe for the rest of your life, what would it be? It's going to be the 11. The 11s? Yeah, yeah. because one, because I didn't get to have it when I was a junior I was in high say, school. Do you have the Concords yet, the black and whites? I have I have the Jubilees. Okay. Um, we got to get this man some concrete. I got some. I have the Space Jams. Okay. But so here's the thing: is like you can take. You said one pair for the rest of your life, right? Right. Well, the, the patent leather. You can dress it up or dress nah, it down. For sure. You can for wear sure. it with the tux. You could wear yeah. it with you know. So that. like, yep. if I'm just going one pair, I got to go with versatility. Okay. So you know, and it just happens to be that you know that's the one that's like. Man, I still I still remember the guys like <laughs> he's thinking you about know? those black and white. Alerts. Man, he's like, I need a pair, man. Uh, <laughs> Don't let me find out you got a pair next week. <laughs> he's like, hey man, I just got a pair. I had to do it. We talked about it on the podcast. I had to get some. <laughs> okay, uh, let everybody know where they can find you. We'll link everything down below in the description. Uh, foundation information, yeah. everything will be down there. Yeah. So HarringtonFamilyFoundation.org is our okay. foundation. Uh, we got our scholarship applications opening up here, okay. coming up in the next couple months. We run a couple fundraisers. We just finished our fall fundraiser with um, with uh, a barrel of bourbon, which you know isn't exactly this this podcast, right, but we right, have our right. spring fund uh, fundraiser, which, like you said, um, I have. Four pair left. Oh yeah, you're doing the thing. Of uh, the Her so Tinker made a Harrington Family Foundation. Yeah, Jordan. Yeah, um, a Jordan One, which you know I. So I had to, you know I have a pair. I just found out Tinker made a pair. Oh, like he, he made himself a pair and he didn't even tell me. So I get this box with <laughs> six, and one of them was mine. And I was like, okay, I got five for to right. to raise money. Right. And we're doing a you know getting ready for the fundraiser last year. And he's like, oh yeah, I got this one too. I was like. Where'd you get that? He's like, well, it's a ten and a half. I had to make one for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. So, uh, yeah, we got that. We got. We'll have our Jordan fundraiser coming up in the springtime. That's but, fire. Um, yeah, I guess. I guess I'm a, on Twitter at what. What? I don't even know what I'm at. Joey Three oh, Harrington or something like that. I don't know. Like, but that's how I get <laughs> I'll out. Link, I'll find it. All the information for uh, you know for our fundraisers because that's. Uh, yeah, that's that's the focus, making sure we raise money for these kids. Okay, yeah. dope. Well, I appreciate it, bro. Thanks for uh, popping in. Yep. I hope your recovery goes amazing. And uh, however I can help, you already know, just hit me up whenever you need me. Much appreciate it. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe, like, download, all the different buttons. Leave a five-star review on the podcast, too. I forgot. I'm, I'm learning the lingo you know, now. The, yeah, I'm learning the lingo. The, yeah you're, you're an influencer now. Yeah. <laughs> all right, y'all. We out. <laughs>